The Slocan Lake watershed is unique in that it's one of the few undammed river lake systems in the East and West Kootenai. It's the interior rainforest, which is also unique. The water is so clean. At this point, there's no industry on our lake. It's a tranquil place that still has lots of wildlife and a huge diversity of vegetation. Slocan Lake Stewardship Society is a nonprofit organization run by volunteers, and the conservation and preservation of the Slocan Lake watershed is our mandate. Slocan Lake is the largest natural lake in southeastern BC. The rest of the lakes are uh, reservoirs, actually, they're dammed, and our lake is undammed. And this gives us a really excellent insights into how climate change and as a control for some of the dammed lakes, how changes that are brought about by what's happening in the world affect our lake. The application of science is critically important to Slocan Lake Stewardship Society. It's one of our cornerstones um, and it's because it's more absolute, it's not an opinion. So we're basing our decisions on research and science in our particular area. So we have done things like both in the lakes and the streams running into the lake, measuring water temperature, measuring chemical content, measuring turbidity at different times of the year, and over the years, we're able to collect data, which is now uh, beginning to be inputted into data across Canada to see how lakes are, are changing with climate change. You might think in an area like this, where the creeks are basically clean, we don't deal with classical pollution of cities, that you wouldn't need to monitor them. But in fact, we do deal with new developments all the time. There, this has been a, traditionally a mining area, so there could be mining problems. And recreation is increasingly putting pressures on the wetlands that are upstream of all this. And so by monitoring down here, we're looking for the effects of these activities. Because we are really protecting this. It's our water sources for us and the communities around here but it's also important for the wildlife that we maintain good, clean water supplies in wetlands. I guess what, what stands out for me is that we have this gradient of up in the Alpine where we've got glaciers all the way down to where we are here in the lake. All of the different habitat types are still all connected and we're able to have a whole suite of species here that in some parts of BC and in the world you just can't find anymore. We have been looking really from the headwaters, whether it's wetlands or water quality sampling, we've been able to pull together a pretty good sense of how pristine and important this area is in terms of water quality. Water quantity is something that we're becoming more concerned of with climate change. And just being able to see how our wildlife are still able to move around this landscape. And so we can really see what we've learned and use that to help further protections or help inform what stewardship programs that we could do. We also have a science committee. And in 2017, we pulled together what I call a science forum. And we posed the question, what are the major threats to our valley? What are the priorities in terms of conservation? We sat around uh, various tables on themes and talked about where are some of the conservation opportunities where we could begin to make inroads in, in looking at uh, climate change impacts, in looking at you know, what's going on with forestry and looking at what's going on with recreation pressure. And what we really were trying to promote was how do we protect our biodiversity here? So out of that forum, one of the big take homes was that this corridor here from the the mouth of the lake all the way up to Summit Lake 
we started to look at it as um, the Bonanza Biodiversity Corridor. If you want to find the most productive lakeshore area wetland complex on Slocan Lake, it's right here. So this became our focal point for if we were going to make the biggest difference in terms of how to turn research into conservation opportunities and stewardship projects. And so we've got several wetland projects that we're working on in terms of enhancement. And so as we were moving up the, the drainage, we continue to look for opportunities. What we now call the BBC, the Bonanza Biodiversity Corridor, was pinpointed as one of the really important corridors for the movement of grizzlies and wolverines. And these researchers who we had at the Science Forum demonstrated that that was true. There are also many species at risk, both plant and animal, in the BBC. So that's become one of our focuses. And so we were able to get funding through the Columbia Basin Trust for an ecosystem enhancement program grant to be able to work in three different wetland complexes within the Bonanza Biodiversity Corridor. The other really important thing that happened that we supported but were not responsible for was the purchase by a land trust of the Bonanza Marsh, which is now called the Sink Meep Sanctuary. And a, another environmental group in our area uh, acquired that. So that's all part of the same system. Again, that's a, another really exciting conservation effort. We also pay attention to what logging is going on in the area because the logging affects the water quality in the tributaries that then affects the lake. Again, it's one big cycle. So if we know that there's going to be particular logging, we get in touch with the logging company. We ask them if we can go on a field trip with them. We've had very good responses when we approach the logging company and they're clear that we're not wanting to shut them down or shut them out, but that we might ask for some modifications to their logging plans based on um, how much the logging is going to affect the little stream or ephemeral stream or creek that then flows into a larger creek that then flows into Slocan Lake. Some of the studies that the Slocan Lake Stewardship Society has arranged to have done and funded, a really important one was the foreshore inventory. And that's so that the entire foreshore of Slocan Lake has been mapped for sensitivity for aquatic habitat index and also potential for the use by fish. We've also done what we call the Imagine Survey and we did it for people who are residents here, and we asked them what was important to them about Slocan Lake, and imagine what, it, what you want in 20 years. It was an incredibly informative study. Our public outreach activities and education are primarily focused on the youth and the younger adults. We host Wild Days, which is a very well-received event. We have three Wild Days during the summer. Well, we originally initiated Wild Days as an educational program because of the importance of conservation in this watershed. And we feel very strongly that education is key. And we wanted to do something that attracted children because they're definitely going to go home and talk about what they learn and what they see. So they, they are the key to the future. And uh, we continue to try and explore different aspects of the watershed, wildlife, water, the little things that you can't see with the naked eye, uh, the bigger things that you can. We need to be educating people about the importance of what happens in the entire watershed because that's going to be what sustains this lake. You can still drink out of this lake. There aren't very many lakes that you can say that about. We, we don't just want to educate and provide this program 
for locals. We want people who come here year after year to enjoy the lake, enjoy the mountains, to know how important it is to understand what's going on so that they can protect what they love here too. Stewardship is a concept that has to be embedded in every individual. It's how we look at everyday things and what we do. Stewarding land is exactly that. Conservation is all about land management and respecting those values that are present and as best we can to sustain them into the future. I think people often despair that they can't do anything to make a contribution, but I think stewardship is about doing those small things. It means not making a mess in nature. It means leaving things neutral. And if you look at the waterways in British Columbia and you see what has been polluted by mining, what has been affected by logging and resource development, or you look at the downturn in the logging industry that is only now being talked about right now in British Columbia, you will see that we have mismanaged our natural resources in Canada because we thought they were infinite. Clean water is not infinite. It will be the most precious commodity on the planet. And our clean water, good soil, clean air is being daily compromised globally. So it means that we need to look after our own patch in a fiercer way than we used to. And it is our responsibility to do that.